Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This time around, we're gonna be rehousing my Megaphobema robustum or giant Colombian reg leg. I've had this female for quite some time and actually did a rehousing and husbandry video on her back in July of 2020. While well, she has well overgrown her new enclosure and it's time to get her into something bigger that will hopefully allow me to show her off a little bit more. So enough of me talking, let's get into rehousing the M robustum. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Megaphobema robustum, our Colombian giant red leg. She's in desperate need of an enclosure upgrade. You can see what I have her in here. Unfortunately, what she had done is burrowed down the back and she was hiding under there. And I actually went to rehouse her months ago, but she filled it in. I assume she was in pre -mold. I didn't want to disturb her. So we waited until she came out. Well, you can see she filled in the burrow and now she's really, really skittish because she's out in the open and has no place to hide. The Megaphobema robustum is a fossorial species. They will burrow right on through adulthood. And this is one of those species I see people keep and they say they have very defensive specimens well, it ends up that they've got them kept terrestrially. There's no room for them to hide. So therefore, you're going to get more of that defensive behavior. And as far as defensive behavior is concerned, this one has a neat little defensive posture where it'll turn around and kick up its back legs at you. I've only seen her do it once. Unfortunately, I've never caught it on video. Maybe we'll get it today. I honestly hope we don't. I hope this is a nice calm rehouse for her because when they're doing that, it means they feel threatened. But they call it like the spinning wheel of death or something. They spin around and kick their back legs up. It's really cool to see. So what we are going to be putting her in into is this here, which is the Exoterra Nano Mini, I believe. It's 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. I'll put the centimeters up as well. And the cover, I do replace all of the wire mesh covers because I have had tarantulas get their toe claws caught in them. It's probably not particularly common, but it can happen. So what we have here is one of the Tinker Frames by CNM Terrariums. And this is the model, they actually sent me this one with my last order to try out, that has the double set of ventilation. So the middle is crystal clear, vent here, vent here, really nice. Kind of uh, fits in a lot better than the original ones, quite honestly. And then inside the enclosure, what we have, cork bark hide. We have about six, six and a half inches of substrate in the back here that's kind of slanted down to the front. What I'm hoping she'll do is go in here and dig and burrow back there. There's plenty of room to burrow. And I didn't want to make it too much higher because keep in mind that when you do uh, rehouse a fossorial species, they are going to take that dirt out as they build their burrows and they take a lot of dirt out and that dirt has to go somewhere. So sometimes I see people set them really up close to the top. And then what happens is they get substrate stacked all the way up to the top of the enclosure. So the substrate is bio but you could use any of the preferred substrate, you know, cocoa fiber, topsoil, mix it with vermiculite, sphagnum moss, mix your own batch up, whatever it may be. I just happen to use this stuff because I really like it. I have some leaf litter in here, some green sphagnum moss, and a pothos plant. We'll see how it goes with the pothos. I have a funny feeling she's going to end up tearing this thing up, but I want to give it a shot. Aesthetically, it looks nice. Obviously, with the plant inside the enclosure, you've got more oxygenation, and sometimes they'll spread out as the pothos will grow and kind of create more cover for them so they'll come out and explore more. And this is one because she is orange. I would love to get some pictures of her against that nice vibrant green that really makes them pop. So what we're going to do now is try to cup this one. She is a little wackadoo, so we'll see how this one goes. I think what we'll probably try to do is come from the top, get her in a cup, get her in here, and get her out that way. But we'll see how it goes. Easy. There's the back legs starting to go up. Oh, see the butt there. You can kind of see the butt's up in the air. And I've had a couple people lately asking about the catch cups and why I prefer the catch cups so much. Well, A, it keeps me, if she starts kicking a cloud of hair, I do have gloves on, but it keeps me safe, keeps Billy safe. The other thing is all of those hairs are actually part of a sense organ. So when we open up the top of this enclosure, they immediately detect the change in pressure. They can feel the breezes. She can probably feel my breath coming down on her, as nasty as that sounds. And when you put the cup on, it stops all that. And I found that the majority of them will calm way down because now it's kind of, it's containing, oh, as I stick the cardboard in and scrub Billy's shot, it's containing her in a way that's keeping all that airflow from hitting her and freaking her out more. So let's see if we can't just get this up in here. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. There you go. So she is probably, I, I, this is one of the species and we'll flash it up there that is considered to be quote unquote a giant. I've heard that the females can get seven and a half, eight inches. She is probably a healthy seven now, a little more gangly. Sorry, let me get her under the light here. And the oranges, well, they're coming out a little bit now. They're looking a little washed out before. She is a very vibrant orange. So what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to put the top back on. 
and that pinch that little leaf. I'm going to try to get her right into the new burrow. There she goes kicking. And remember when I took my brush and said, here's my brush? Oh, there it is. Hopefully what she'll do, oh, no, she's not digging that at all. Easy girl. <laughs> That's a new one. There we go. And right into the burrow. All right. Try to get some more light on her. We'll get a nice shot of her booty there at least. I did take the back of the paintbrush and kind of open up the burrow down there so there's more of a starter burrow. Again, when rehousing fossorial species, I know there's information out there that says they will dig their own burrows, and most of them will eventually, but if you give them a good place to start, give them a cork bark hide, give them a starter burrow beneath it, they will settle in much more quickly. Also, a trick for ones that appreciate a little moisture, you create that little starter burrow and you squirt some water in there too so it's nice and moist. They'll usually seek that area out and start burrowing there so you'll get it. Usually, them settling in much more quickly. Quickly. So I'm not going to go terribly into the husbandry information for this one because I did do a full husbandry guide on them in, I believe it was July of 2020. The thing to note is, again, the most important key points, they are fossorial. They are fossorial as slings. The majority of them will be fossorial as adults. I've spoken to one individual that had, I believe, an 8-inch female in a huge 15-gallon long tank with about 7, 8 inches of substrate in it, and she dug all the way down to the bottom. So you do want to give them that room to dig, but I have seen mine out quite a bit. So they're not one of those pet holes. They will come out and about, and I'm hoping she'll come out and explore some more. As far as temperatures are concerned, as long as you keep the substrate moist, don't worry about humidity. Don't worry about ideal humidity requirements. Just keep the substrate moist. She will be getting a water dish right in here. So give them a water dish. Remember, for a moisture-dependent species, you can always give them an extra large water dish, which not only gives them a place to drink from, but also as that water evaporates, it raises the natural humidity level in here. It keeps things nice and moist for them. And then temperatures, back when I first got her as a sling. The temperatures in my tarantula room would hit the low 70s or so, and then the summertime would sometimes hit around 80 degrees, and she grew just fine at that. Now that we're in the new tarantula room, right now it's about 74 degrees in here and stays about anywhere between 73 and 75, depending on the shelf they're on. And in the summertime, it gets very, very hot with the temperatures up here sometimes hitting the mid 80s. So these guys are fairly fast growers. They are excellent eaters. So if you get a little teeny tiny sling, expect to have some of those adult colors within a year or two, which is awesome because they are really pretty spiders and incredibly popular. I get a lot of requests for people to show off the M Robustum. So this was one of the ones when I was trying to figure out what video to do next. She desperately needed a new enclosure. I had a lot of people asking, so here we are. So Megaphobema Robustum, giant red leg, giant red leg, right? giant Colombian giant red leg tarantula, awesome species, and I'll obviously do updates as she settles in. Hopefully we'll catch her out and about. So this is a very popular tarantula and one that has a lot of aficionados. Every time I post up a video of mine, I get a lot of folks that talk about how it's their favorite species, and I can definitely see why. Between the coloration and the fun behaviors and the fact that they eat and grow quickly and are quite hardy, well, you have a lot there to love with this spider. Now, the big thing with these guys is to make sure they do get some moist substrate. They like that moist substrate. They like a water dish. Make sure you don't let things dry out too much and continue to give larger specimens room to dig. That's the only time I ever really see super defensive ones are spiders that are kept on shallow substrate with not enough room to burrow. They're out and about and that's when you'll get some of that defensive behavior. If you give them room to burrow, they will usually construct a nice deep little den for themselves, but they'll also come out to hunt so you'll catch them out and about quite a bit. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate Click the little circle up there. If you want to check out more videos, I'll put some more actual M robust them down here and best for viewer up there. As always, if you take the time to comment, I will take the time to reply. Just know it can take a couple days. Thanks all for watching. Happy New Year, and we'll catch you all next time.